We have just arrived in Quito, which is in South America. That's like America, but South. We're here to see the amazing Galapagos Islands, but we have a few days in Quito before that, and since it's located right next to the equator, we have to go see the middle of the world. So we took the local bus that went surprisingly well. We didn't understand too much, but uh, the guy who we was paying to was really nice to us. And we have now finally arrived in the middle of the world. Um, almost. Well, almost, yeah. yeah. We're, we're about to walk up to it now. Now, what we weren't aware of is that the equator is moving slightly every year. So the equator is actually defined as a five kilometer wide strip. So we're not actually sure if we're in the middle of that or the end of it, but this is pretty much as officially on the equator as it gets. So we're in the Southern Hemisphere now. They calculated that the equator was approximately here in the early 1700s and sometime later they built a smaller monument here. Uh, in the 1900s they found out that they wanted to calculate properly and make it more accurate and they figured out it was exactly the same place as they said in the 1700s. But then later they built this huge monument because this was a really small place. But then they wanted to expand it and make it more of a touristy attraction. So this is the uh, most visited tourist attraction in Ecuador. And they built this new monument that's a, a lot bigger. And they actually spent 700,000 stones to build this. And it was opened in 1992, then it was only this building. But now they've expanded the area and made this whole sort of middle of the world city with 99 different buildings, like shops and marketplaces and restaurants and stuff like that. So now I'm on the north side of the world. I'm in the south. And the north. And the south. And both. This is awesome. Hey Tora, how is life in the northern hemisphere? It's quite nice. Good. In the south. Oh, it's quite good here as well. I mean, it's pretty much similar to yours. We found Norway on the globe. We have to stop for a second to explain why this is such a bad idea. While it was really cool to have our passport stamped, when we returned to Europe it almost turned into a huge catastrophe. A passport is an official document issued by the government, and if there's any unofficial changes made to that, and putting a tourist stamp in there is considered that, then technically it invalidates the entire passport. As we went through the automatic passport check in Amsterdam, the chip in my passport failed and I had to be called over to the counter. The lady at the counter explained that if you have one of these tourist stamps in your passport, you could be denied access. Luckily though, she was nice and let me through. But for the future, we'll get a small book where we can collect all the tourist stamps to avoid the problem again. If you like to collect stamps, so should you. While we've had these kind of tourist stamps for years in our passport and never had a problem before, would you really risk your next vacation because of it? Now, back to the equator. Quite surprised by the size of the museum here. We kind of expected the middle of the world to just have the line of equator and that's it, but it's massive here. They have all kinds of different museums and things to look at. Look at that, Tora is busy measuring the world. Have you figured out where the center is? Yay! Yay! We found a museum here at the equator. 
and it's augmented reality, which is very, very cool. So we've been given a tablet and with this one, we can walk around and we can see stuff that kind of isn't here. Check this out. So Tor has a tablet and we have these kind of coils here. And then we... From Look at that! Clay. And if we turn around a little bit, created by the first we can go around the statue. Amongst the inhabitants of the Valdivia culture. Look at this! We booked ourselves a trip to the Galapagos, but we wouldn't need that. They're right here! Well, we're kind of still looking forward to seeing them in real life, but this is like really cool. How is it up there? It's not that far up, but it, it's so fun! So we came to this place because we really wanted to stand on the equator, but it turns out there's actually a lot more than just an imaginary line here. There's a small train that we've been riding around to see the place, we've seen a lot of museums, there's even one here that has this 3D uh, augmented reality thing, which is really really cool, and all that is included in the price of only $5. And the bus over here costs us, what, 35 cents per person, something like that? It's really, really cheap. You can take a taxi here as well, and it does take a while. It's about an hour's drive from the old town in Quito. Uh, but it was totally worth it, and while well, we thought we were going to spend like 30 minutes here, I think we spent four hours or so now. So our guide has told us that the center of the world where we were with the big museum and everything is actually not on the equator. This, however, is almost. We saw a picture of this monument earlier and thought it torn it down and built a bigger one, but it actually turns out that a few kilometers from where we were is the actual monument. We have now reached the center of Calacali, and this is the town where the actual equator is. And it also seems a bit more genuine because it's not placed in any central place or, you know, where it would look pretty. It's just randomly in kind of the side of the square, which points at this being the actual place. Here is our proof. I mean, we trust in Google. So right now it's saying that we are just a tiny bit above the equator. Oop. And if we put the pin now slightly below us, all of a sudden it has a negative value, so this is the actual equator, not the place we were in earlier, with the big museums and this is the center of the world. This is the actual place. Now previously Tora jumped back and forth between the equator, now that we just realized she didn't, we have to do it one more time. Are you ready? Yep! One, two, three! Wow! One, two, three! We're being such weird tourists right now. Now, there's a bit of contradictory information here, so we do owe an explanation. What they said at Mita del Mundo is kind of correct. The Earth is slightly changing in shape. And since the equator is simply an imaginary line or a concept, they've simply defined it as a 5 km wide strip and anything within that is considered the equator. But our maps can't keep changing all the time, so they had to decide one single point that would be the equator on the maps, even if that isn't 100% geographically correct. So if you want to go where Google says this is the equator, Kalakali is the place to go. Now, some sources have said that the GPSs in mobile phones aren't accurate enough to measure this anyway and that you need a military GPS. However, as we've just shown, they are more than accurate enough for this purpose. The GPS accuracy limitation, known as selective availability, was actually removed in 2000 by the US. So today, civilian equipment is more or less as accurate as their military equivalents. Now, speaking of myths, we've gathered a few myths here to debunk or prove regarding the equator. The first one up is the Coriolis effect. 
It describes how the rotation of the Earth affects the winds and therefore how the air move in different directions in the northern and the southern hemisphere. And also how this affects the drains of water when it flushes down in basins. Now, technically, it is correct that it does have an effect. There are just so many other factors that has such a big impact, way bigger than the actual Coriolis effect. You may have seen some videos where they show this. You have one basin on each side of the equator, and they flush both of them, and you can see how they move in different directions. Now, first of all, as we've just talked about, the equator keeps moving, so actually finding this point that is in on the exact place of the geographical equator is close to impossible. And even if you were able to do this, the difference would be so little that it doesn't matter. But how is it done then? Because in the videos you can clearly see how it's drained in different directions. Well, it's actually rather simple. All they do is when they pour the water into the basins, they do it at a slight angle so that it creates a spin. When it's then drained, that spin gets amplified and it looks like it's draining in different directions because the Coriolis effect, well, it's simply just the way it was poured in. In the museum in Meta del Mundo, they actually have an experiment showing this, where they've rigged it on purpose to pour water into the basins at different angles. And they do place these on the same side of the equator, showing that they drain in different directions, which shouldn't be possible if this myth was true. Next up is balance. So at the equator in Meta del Mundo, there is a nail and an egg. And it says that because the gravity is lower at the equator than at the poles, it is easier to balance things. Now this one is technically true. The gravity is slightly lower at the equator than it is at the poles, and it does make it easier to balance something when the gravity is lower. However, this change in gravity is so little that for all practical purposes, you will never feel the difference. Last one up, you are shadowless. This one is actually true, and it's applicable for a lot more than just the equator. When the sun hits directly from above, your shadow will be below you, making it practically disappear. This can be observed at the right time of the day and year, anywhere between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. We crossed the Tropic of Capricorn in Africa three years ago, and just like the equator, this line moves as well. So we were actually 200 meters off or so. Unlike the other mists here, this one is actually quite visible. When you stand at the equator and you take a photo, it kind of looks fake because there are no shadows and to your brain, especially if you're not used to living around the equator, it just seems a bit off. There you have it. We hope you liked it and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future.